is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's time for five minutes on tech. How fast can I talk? No, just kidding. This is about NVIDIA Max-Q. Why am I doing this now? They announced Max-Q at Computex a couple of months ago, but it's just now that laptops with this new GPU technology are becoming available, and we're going to be reviewing some, including this really sexy and pretty unusually designed, when you open it up, Asus Rogue Zephyrus GX. 501. Oh, I can't wait to do this one. This is pretty exciting stuff. So when I first heard about NVIDIA Max-Q, which is basically your GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080 for laptops, but using less power and also having lower clock speeds, I thought, well, gee, you know, I'm a macho gamer. I want as much power as possible. But you know what? There's obviously a lot of people out there who want to find a balance between portability, decent looks, noise, and performance. So what they did is they shaved a little off the top for the clock speeds and a significant amount in some cases for the GTX 1080 for the TDP or the amount of wattage is consuming, the amount of power that it's consuming. What does that mean to you? That you get most of the performance of a GTX 1060 and name 1070 and 1080, but not all of it. And that isn't such a bad thing. I'm kind of sold on it after reviewing this Rogue Zephyrus right here. And there's also going to be models from MSI, the Stealth Pro line, you remember that? I reviewed a couple of those. It's going to be reborn again. That's always been very thin, very light, and very hot. So this can help with that. Clevo's going to have a model up as well, and Acer's going to have the Predator Triton 700. They still haven't said which GPUs they're going to have in there, but from the specs, it looks like 1070, even 1080. Now, a lot of them have the keyboard forward design. I'll show you what I mean right here, and I'll open this up. And we've seen this done before on the Razer Blade Pro, on the uh, the Acer 21X because they have more room for the cooling that way. So some of them are doing this, like the, the this this Asus right here and the Acer. And I suspect that having a 1080 means pretty much the forward-facing keyboard. So what is this all about? In terms of performance, say you're talking about a GTX 1080 Max Cube, which is what's in this Rogue Zephyrus, one of the few that actually goes up to the 1080. You're looking at about 10% more performance than your usual GTX 1070 that you'll find in a laptop, which is almost as powerful as your desktop these days. And it's it's about 10 to 15% less powerful than the usual 1080 non-max Q version. So it sits in the middle. So I suppose you could say they could have called it a GTX 1075 to give you an idea of where it fits in performance. So there you have it. So when you're making your buying decision, if you go with one that has a GTX 1070 Max-Q, that will probably have a little bit better performance relative to the full powered part because they didn't have to drop the wattage as much. As the GPUs get more powerful, the wattage and the heat they generate goes up. So there you have it. The 1080 will probably suffer the most by being turned into a Max-Q design. The 1060 the least. And we'll be reviewing all of these eventually, so we'll find out for sure. So is it worth it? If you value a thin and light design, you razor blade buyers, for example, uh, are prime candidates. The, the Stealth Pro line that did well for MSI. So this is an exciting move forward because yes, these are quieter and these are cooler because Max-Q, the requirement that NVIDIA has, it isn't just here's this GPU, you all just throw that in their manufacturers and have fun. No. They basically have a certification they process. They work with the manufacturers. So it can't consume more than the amount that you saw on screen in terms of power. It has to have support whisper quiet mode, which means 40 decibels are less when you're using it for gaming. And that's true. It is a lot cooler. And they have to have higher quality cooling inside. Yet not just your usual metal heat sink, slap it on. You Alienware aficionados, I know you're out there. You're repasting your heat sinks all the time. You're doing lapping. You're doing new thermal pans and all that sort of thing. And you're wondering, why don't they always do this at the factory? Because that kind of attention to detail and these even more expensive heat sinks cost a lot of money. So you're going to get that here. You're going to get vapor chamber cooling, that sort of thing. So that's more expensive and more difficult to make than just a flat piece of metal. All that's required to keep this relatively cool and relatively light. Now, it's not going to be as cool as an Ultrabook, but it's going to be a lot cooler than a lot of gaming laptops that have been on the market that are on the thin side. So it's pretty exciting stuff. There's a little bit of compromise, but you're not shaving painful amounts of performance off either. And that's what it is. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, usually three times a week, and thumbs up if you like this vid.